Hello guys, thank you for checking out the new episode of the devlog. Um, last month we talked about setting up the Steam store page and the making of the announcement teaser and I ended the devlog with opening up a brand new project in Unity to get started with the actual development. And the first topic I wanted to tackle was pathfinding and the basic movement controls. So I first did some research if there were any pre-existing pathfinding assets that I could use for my game. But I quickly realized that most of these assets were designed for other purposes and many of the features I had in mind for my game could not be easily implemented. So I decided to write the pathfinding system for my game from scratch to be as flexible as possible. And first I thought about what exactly the system should be able to do. Obviously, the character should move to the position that is being clicked on. I want to be able to freely define an area in which the movement is executed. The character should search the shortest paths within the boundaries of the area. And it must be possible to define zones within the area that cannot be entered and around which the character also finds the best possible path. Let's stop at this point for now and take a look at how I implemented these points in Unity. As you can see here, the scene in Unity is almost completely empty. Up here is just the basic camera so we can see something and here is a game object named Nav System with a script attached to it named Nav System as well. I won't go into detail about what all this stuff here is doing exactly, but the important thing is all elements related to the pathfinding and so on are collected under this game object and everything is controlled from this main script. And if we open up the NUF system, we find array caster and array aim. These are just empty game objects to keep track of the start and the end position of the path. And to see if it's working, I attached an image of the game character to the start position object. As a child of this game object, I can now drag and drop a prefab I made called Nuff Plane Prefab. Out of the box, it looks like this. And all of this is completely 2D, by the way. This game object and its script are responsible for everything that happens on this plane, and it works like this. I can position vertex points to define the outline of the plane. All these points are getting connected one by one from top to bottom, and the last vertex is connected with the first one to create a closed shape. I can now simply add more vertex points to create a custom shape. The connection of these points is visualized in the editor view by simply drawing some gizmo lines between the vertex points. But when I run the script, those points are used to create two different types of colliders. An edge collider to define the outline of the shape and an additional polygon collider that defines the whole area. Both types of colliders are good for different collision detections, so I decided to simply let the script create both. And when I click inside of this area, you can see that the character moves along the most efficient path to reach the goal. To achieve that, I used an algorithm called Dijkstra. I will not go into detail how this algorithm works exactly, but I will link the video that I watched to learn about it in the description. Basically, the algorithm looks at each vertex point one after another and checks for direct connections to all other points. If there is a direct connection, the distance is calculated and stored inside of a two-dimensional array. Start and end point inside of the area are handled as if there were vertex points as well. This two-dimensional array now stores all the information that is needed to calculate the shortest path between two points. Again, check out the video in the description to learn about the details of the algorithm. After the shortest path is calculated, the script instantiates pathway points and stores them inside of a list. Then the character moves towards the first waypoint of the list, and when he reaches it, the first element of the list, and therefore the first waypoint, gets destroyed, and the character moves further along. Obstacles are also a prefab that I can now drag inside of the scene and define by vertex points. The script automatically grabs the information out of it and creates colliders and adds all the vertex points to the Dijkstra algorithm. Cool, so that is working, but there are some more things that I wanted the system to take care of. For example, scaling. As I said, all this happens in 2D and to create the illusion of depth, I wanted the character to scale down when he moves upwards and vice versa. And I want to be able to define how strong this effect is, because this is depending on the perspective of the background. And this is what these two additional gizmo lines are for. With these four variables, I can define the scaling for the front and the back, visualized by the size of the gizmo circles around the vertex points. And depending on the position of the character, the script interpolates between the scaling values. This also applies to the speed of the movement, so that the character moves slower across the screen when he is further away. But just looking at the y-axis of the character and applying the scale may not be enough in every scenario. As I said in the last episode, I want the game to have some twisted and crazy environments, and that means more complex perspectives. Let's say we have a scene like this, where the character should be much smaller in this position than in this one, even though it is the same position on the y-axis. 
To be able to do that, I created a prefab called Scale Effector, which I can use to manipulate the scaling value around it. Here I can define the radius and the strength of the effect. And the last feature that this NAV plane game object has is the additional click area, which is deactivated by default. This is simply an additional collider that can be used to define an area around the walkable area that can be clicked on. And if so, the script finds the nearest vertex inside of the walkable area and creates the path. But there is one more thing that was important for me. Let's say we have an environment like this and I want the character to be able to walk across this hill into the distance. But that means the position of the character moves upwards, then downwards for a bit, and then again upwards. And while doing so, he has to constantly scale down. This cannot be achieved using a single plane with the scaling features I just described. And it really took me a while to figure out a solution for that, but here is what I came up with. I can now add multiple NAV planes in a scene and connect them. So let's add a second plane and change its color for better clarity. Here I can change the layer to define if the plane should be in front or not. It is important to use a different layer when two planes are intersecting because otherwise it would mess up the colliders and thus the Dijkstra algorithm. Let's quickly make the outline for the second plane. And now we have to connect both planes with each other. And that's what the last prefab here is for. The bridge prefab connects a vertex point from one plane to a vertex point of another plane. I just have to hook up a start and an end vertex of the bridge and define some waypoints in between. And that's it. When I click onto the second plane, the system finds the shortest path on both planes and connects them with the path of the bridge. Each plane has its own scaling lines, scaling effectors, obstacles and additional click areas. And later I will use the bridges for layering the images as well, so that the character is rendered behind the hill when he walks over it. And the last thing I implemented into the project was movement by keyboard on controller. You can now move the character inside of the plane areas like this as well. Managing moving over the bridges with this type of controls was a bit tricky, but now it works, as you can see here. All this took me more time and energy than I first thought, but um, now I am very happy with the results. I can now build and customize the scene very quickly and effectively, and I don't have to limit myself in the design of the backgrounds and perspective. Next, I will work on the layers and the rendering order so that the character can actually walk around objects and stuff and probably on the first basic animations to get a feeling for the movement and the speed of everything. Please let me know if you have any questions or recommendations for the next devlog. So I will get back to work and see you guys next month. Thank you so much, everybody.